everyone. Well, we are going to be talking about SIBO. SIBO is actually small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Then that's what happens here when a bad bacteria basically Cynthia Falpi is going to be joining me. She is a naturopathic doctor, and we are going to be talking about SIBO and how you can, well, uh, hi there, Dr. Falpi, how are you? Hello there, I'm doing great, thank you. How are you doing tonight? Thank you, thank you, great. Well, welcome to our show today. Thank you, thank you. So I was just telling our viewers we are going to be talking about SIBO and how naturopathy can help. Before that, um, we would love to uh, hear your story. Yours, you know, I know you've had your health journey at a young age that led you to a naturopathic medicine. So let's uh, hear your story uh, first before we go into the topic. Okay, absolutely. Uh, I'm happy to share. So let's see. It began when I was 14. And I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, which is an inflammatory bowel disease, if you don't know what that is. And it is a disease where inflammation gets stuck on. And when it gets stuck on, this can lead to urgency, frequency for in bowel movements. It could cause lots of abdominal pain. Um, your ability to digest food, absorb nutrients, it really becomes weakened. And then this can also lead to uh, mental health issues such as anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. um, mood swings, irritability. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very similar to IBS, mm -hmm. except we know that IB with IBS, anxiety triggers those symptoms um, or can, um, mm -hmm. but also SIBO can, which we'll, we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. and, and SIBO actually can also trigger IBD as well, and ulcerative oh, colitis. They're all interrelated, all these uh, SIBO, yeah. IBS, IBD, and even ulcerative colitis? Uh, yes. Them okay. Yes, they are, yes. And so, uh, you know, I went the allopathic route. Um, mm -hmm. I started, uh, I saw gastroenterologists, I did colonoscopies. Uh, okay. I started to take different steroid medications and anti-inflammatories. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I just followed what the gastroenterologist told me, mm -hmm. but unfortunately my symptoms just wouldn't go away. They kind of, they continued to come up. They continued to get worse. I started to develop symptoms or uh, side effects from the medications that I was taking. Mm -hmm. And so they recommended that I removed, surgically removed part of my colon to help reduce yeah. symptoms. Um, and this was, this is very normal when it comes to mm -hmm. ulcerative colitis or Crohn's. Um, however, we didn't really want to go that route. You know, I was still very, very young. Uh, yeah. And, you know, my, my mother, thankfully, uh, I'm grateful for her. She looked to a natural health practitioner and wow. said, please help my daughter, um, you know, she has this incurable inflammatory disease and they want to remove her colon. What can we do? Mm -hmm. And so that really began my natural medicine journey. Uh, I started to take aloe vera juice. I started to um, take some herbs and supplements and just slowly started to uh, nourish my gut. But again, mm -hmm. I was young. And so I really didn't take things seriously. I was, I was still very unconscious. So it was about, I'd say almost eight to nine years um, going in this cycle of medicines, colonoscopies, symptoms, flare ups. Oh my God. That must have been awful, especially at a young age. You know, it definitely, it's isolating. It's isolating, yeah. you know, because you, you don't feel normal. You know, you mm -hmm. want to eat what other people are eating and you don't want to be sitting in the bathroom, you know, for 20, 30 minutes. You want to just continue mm -hmm. your life. Um, but unfortunately, that was my life um, for a long time. But luckily, uh, I got introduced to some lovely people who started to teach me about diet and how I can heal my symptoms and reverse them and manage them effectively with mm -hmm. whole foods, plant-based foods, um, getting away from processed foods. Mm -hmm. So I s 
started to do that. And, you know, my diet was very poor uh, Mm -hmm. before this. I ate a very processed diet. It was very heavy in sugar. Um, And so once I started to really transition to a whole foods, plant-based diet, my symptoms radically started to disappear. And I would say within a month or two, I started to wean myself off of my medications. And that, let's see, it's 2021. That is going on 11 years since I've wow. been medication free and uh, no, no surgery. Yeah. 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 And, you know, from there, you know, from seeing that radical change, it really inspired me. And it really, really inspired me to teach people that, hey, there are some alternative and holistic ways that we can Mm -hmm. heal ourselves that maybe mainstream medicine isn't fully embracing or just not fully aware of at that time. Mm -hmm. And it it really uh, started my self-healing journey and then also my medical journey in becoming a naturopathic doctor Mm -hmm. and really learning all the different types of healing modalities out there. And Mm -hmm. I've tried a lot (laughs) to heal. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. If you have a problem, you would end up trying everything. (laughs) Yes. And and I really have, I mean, you name it, chiropractic, (laughs) acupuncture, um, reflexology, hypnotherapy, um, energy healing, uh, my goodness, functional medicine, you know, uh, the list can go on and on. Ayurvedic medicine, I mean, you know, and and then not just physical medicines, but also talk therapy. You know, I've done a lot of that. I I didn't know there was anything called talk therapy. Yes, yes. You know, um, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, things like that. And then also psychedelic medicines have played a huge Mm -hmm. role in my gut healing as well. So all of those things have Mm -hmm. really uh, led me to today, where now I hold space for people Mm -hmm. and can relate how difficult some of these issues can be. You know, I know what it's like to be in a hospital bed a -hmm. lot and be sick and wish, you know, why me? Why is this happening? Mm -hmm. And now I look back and realize that it was all a blessing. So that way I could be there for people in this way and and learn my body and learn to heal. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful story. For all the viewers who are just joining, we are actually going to be talking about SIBO and how naturopathy uh, medicine can help. But before that, you know, we we wanted to hear Dr. Falti's um, journey. Her personal journey has been very um, interesting. And and she went through so many years of, you know, back and forth, but finally led her to become a naturopathic doctor and heal herself. So that's the journey we wanted to hear her story before we go into the SIBO part. So let's let's go into SIBO uh, and understand what ha- exactly happens, you know, in SIBO. Yeah, absolutely. So before I go into SIBO, there is a little bit of anatomy that we have to discuss first. Okay. So- yeah, in, we are not in, science students. We are not medical doctors. <laughs> I'll I'll make sure it's as simple as possible. So, okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, in our stomach, in our stomach, um, we have a set of nerves, and these nerves help us move food along. And okay, the kind they, of they, going down. Yeah, exactly. It's this flow. You know, I I always tell people it's like this flow. It's kind of like ocean waves um, helping (laughs) the food move along. And this movement is called motility. And there there's a complex of nerves that help um, move the food along. And this complex is called the migrating motor complex. Mm. So so this migrating motor motor complex uh, It is comprised of cells, and these cells contain a little protein called vinsulin. That's Mm. the extent of the science jargon. So when these cells become damaged, bacteria Mm -hmm. from our colon can backwash 
into the small intestine where they're not supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, this can allow bacteria then to grow and feed on food because that motility, that movement isn't, ha isn't working well. Mm -hmm. And when food sits there, what will happen is the bacteria will feed on it and then the bacteria will ferment the food. And oh, with this yeah. ferment, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And then with this fermentation, um, this fermentation can then cause uh, gases and the bacteria yeah. can excrete gas from all of this, um, th this feasting that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there are three types of gases uh, that the bacteria produce. There is hydrogen gas, there's mm -hmm. methane gas, and then there's hydrogen sulfide gas. So depending on which bacteria is the most prevalent in your gut, mm -hmm. that will also uh, dictate the symptoms that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, we know that with hydrogen, hydrogen gas is going to tend to cause more diarrhea symptoms. I see. Where, mm -hmm, where methane gas is going to tend to be constipation. Mm -hmm. And then hydrogen sulfide is going to, going to usually uh, have a distinct smell it will smell like rotten eggs. Mm -hmm. And that can be a rotten egg smell with the breath or in the stool or with the gat, with um, flatulence. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm talking to a client, we go through these symptoms and I'll always ask them, you know, mm -hmm. is the gas foul smelling? How is this still smelling? You know, all the fun details. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so um, this these gases and the bacteria, this then leads to bloating and abdominal pain. And it's just, it's so uncomfortable. It, it really is miserable. Um, mm -hmm. You know, no one enjoys these, these feelings. And then in addition to the gases, what will happen is intestinal permeability. Intestinal permeability is what some practitioners call leaky gut. And this is where um, the gut lining develops mm -hmm. little leaks or little channels where mm -hmm. food and other things can get, um, get through where they're not supposed mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. And so this reduces our ability to digest carbohydrates. Okay. So then when someone has SIBO and they eat these foods, mm -hmm. they, the carbohydrates ferment, leading to even more bloating and more pain. So oh, it's just this the, vicious pain cycle. Pain in the, yes. the, the abdomen area right here. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so that's really SIBO in a mm -hmm. simplified version. <laughs> that's no, I think, I think it's a very simple way that you explain. I mean, I can see my, with a microscope, my gut now. <laughs> <laughs> You know what yeah. I mean? There should be some kind of a lens that I can see my stomach inside. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, it, it's important not to overcomplicate it. You know, there's a lot of things that we could talk about um, yeah. to talk about the anatomy and things like that. But really, there's a movement that's supposed to happen in between mm -hmm. our meals that yeah. isn't happening. And, and that is what leads to excess bacteria, excess gas. And that's what leads to these symptoms. Got it. All right. So now that we uh, so understand what, what happens inside our stomach, um, so um, so let's talk a little bit about, you, you talk about the symptoms, like, you know, some we would feel bloating, we would feel a little, little bit of abdominal pain. And then how do you test it? Like, is there a test? Or if, if someone comes to you, say, hey, I'm feeling pain, and you kind of know it's SIBO, or you want to have some kind of a SIBO test to be conducted on that person? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I always, always recommend testing um, mm -hmm. just because it's good to know. It's good to know what's happening in your body. You know, it's, yeah. it's education. And I always tell people, you know, when you're spending money on a test, which the mm -hmm. tests, I believe, um, they, they range uh, from two to $300. But mm -hmm. I always tell everyone it's an investment. 
It really mm-hmm. is. Because once you find out and then you can treat it, I mean, you will feel so much better when, without daily gas and bloating and belching and reflux and, you know, the, these yeah. issues that make you not feel as confident in yourself. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely. So testing. So let's say the testing is uh, is done now, and and you know it's SIBO. So let's mm-hmm. talk a little bit about the the now the protocol, right? The treatments. Mm-hmm. Um, so from a naturopathy point of view, what mm-hmm. is the overall framework? You know, and this is like not a medical advice, but overall framework yes. that that you would tell a, a a potential client. Yes, of course. Um, and before I say that, I just want to say that the the test that you do is a SIBO breath test. SIBO so breath, so it's a breath test. Yes, you will, okay. um, you will avoid, uh, you will eat carbohydrates just like normal. You mm-hmm. will take the SIBO breath test and you'll get a tube. And in this tube, you're going to just blow in the tube once every hour for three hours. So it's a oh, three okay. hour breath You blow test. it and you keep it and then you blow it and then you keep it? Is that what yes. it is? Exactly. And then you'll send that to the lab. The lab will test for whichever gas is the most prevalent. Um, And then that will help rule out exactly what it is. Okay. Yeah. And so then once we find out it's SIBO, you know, one thing that I do, uh, you know, that's unique to me because I, um, I don't prescribe, I don't recommend, I, I, I'm really a teacher. So once we find that out, I just teach my clients, um, like you mentioned, somewhat of a protocol. And the Mm -hmm. first thing is to make sure that you want to treat the overgrowth. And Mm -hmm. so I will teach them that there are two options. They can go to their primary care physician and they can Mm -hmm. let their primary care physician know, and then they can get one or two different types of antibiotics. It's rifaximin or neomycin. Both okay. work lovely for yeah. SIBO. But mm-hmm. many people who come to me don't love antibiotics yeah. and yeah. don't want to go that route. And they'd yeah. rather do more of an herbal antibiotic. Mm-hmm. And so I explain and educate them that there is an herbal antibiotic formula out there. Um, there's a few that are very high in certain um herbs like berberine and garlic, but I always recommend to work with a practitioner if you are trying to heal yourself. Um, You know, we all need support um, and and need expert guidance. So Mm -hmm. once we figure out what it is, we'll then have them treat the infection with herbal antibiotics. And the herbal antibiotics, uh, based on Uh, Clinical data and research shows Mm -hmm. that the herbal antibiotics work just as well, if not better, than the conventional antibiotics, Um, which is just, it's just really nice for some clients Mm -hmm. who want to go that route and feel reassured. And then once they do the antibiotic, that's done for four weeks. And Mm -hmm. in addition to four weeks of those gentle herbal antibiotics, they Mm -hmm. will also take binders. So that's something that I don't see often. Um, But if you're taking an antibiotic of any kind, Mm -hmm. you are eradicating and killing bacteria. Yeah. Well, if you're killing that bacteria, it's going to be released and it's going to be floating around in the body. Mm -hmm. And how is it going to get out? Mm-hmm. It's it's going to be much more effective if you take a binder. And a binder can be anything from charcoal or bentonite clay, um, zeolite clay. Any of these things are fantastic at binding the bacteria. So then you can mm-hmm. excrete it out more efficiently. Um, mm-hmm. Because something that uh, we see a lot is after antibiotic use, sometimes people don't feel as well. Sometimes they'll yeah. have dizziness, they'll have um, sometimes issues, mm-hmm. uh, they'll have brain fog. And it could be that you released a lot of bacteria and you didn't bind it properly. So binding mm-hmm. is important. And then in addition with binding, there's a specific diet. Now, um, mm-hmm. I'd like to please frame this with I don't love diets. 
I think okay, that I know, we, are I know all, <laughs> we are all so unique. Um, you know, I'm not a fan of diets. Uh, I think it's important to find out what you're allergic to and what you're intolerant to, remove those, and then listen to your body. But with this, we do want to starve the bacteria of carbohydrates. Okay. So you want to do a, a low FODMAP or elemental diet. Those are the two options. Mm -hmm. So a low FODMAP diet um, works wonders. There's lots of research that it works mm -hmm. well for SIBO. Yeah. Elemental diet also works well. However, the elemental diet is a, it's a protein powder with mm -hmm. vitamins and nutrition, uh, nutrients. And when you're on an elemental diet, it is only the powder that you're consuming. And so okay. it's not a lot of calories. Uh, yeah. People usually get tired. They usually have headaches. They're usually starving. You know, you don't want to, you want to starve your bacteria, but you don't want to starve yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't love the elemental diet, but some practitioners do use it. Um, mm -hmm. I find the low FODMAP diet uh, is, is a great, uh, a great option. And mm -hmm. there's actually a low FODMAP food chart that I, I highly recommend for everyone listening uh, on ibsdiets.org. It okay. is, uh, it's fantastic. It's simple. Um, it gives you two columns. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a green column and a red column. The red column is high FODMAP. The green column is low FODMAP. So it's okay. very simple. Um, and you just want to follow the green column for the four weeks that you're on those antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in addition to those things, uh, like I mentioned, I always like to remove food allergies and intolerances mm -hmm. um, to make sure we're reducing inflammation in the body uh, yeah. while they are healing and removing this overgrowth. So that's really the, the mm -hmm. general protocol uh, per mm -hmm. se um, mm -hmm. to get started. No, I, I think you've pretty much laid, laid uh, down the framework, the overall framework that you talked about, starting from the testing, starting from the symptoms that you talked about, you talked about different gases, you know, and then you talked about the, uh, the test, the blowing the breath test three times, and then figuring out what the test would come back, and then herbal antibiotics, right, and then the, either the FODMAP or the elemental diet. At least, you know, people have a framework of what to work on. And yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And one thing um, that may be really beneficial is if you are unsure if you have SIBO, but you do have certain symptoms. And if mm -hmm. I may, I would like to list some of these symptoms that oh, aren't just gas or bloating. Okay, mm -hmm. great. So if you have chronically low iron, or mm -hmm. if when you're consuming a lot of fiber, your symptoms mm -hmm. worsen, or if you have eczema or rosacea okay. or skin rashes or acne vulgaris um, mm -hmm. or if you notice um, your stools they are pale or they are white in color or mucusy mm -hmm. or if you have a chronic illness such as mm -hmm. inflammatory bowel disease fibromyalgia mm -hmm. hypothyroidism chronic mm -hmm. fatigue syndrome um, mm -hmm. there's autoimmune diseases Infertility is actually a new one that's actually being linked with SIBO. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Parkinson's, diabetes, mm -hmm. chronic pelvic pain. So all of these chronic illnesses, uh, mm -hmm. I think it would be very holistic to also mm -hmm. rule out SIBO just to make sure they aren't exacerbating your symptoms and making you mm -hmm. chronically sick as well. And so, you know, undigested food in the stool is another symptom. And then the mm -hmm. other symptoms that I already mentioned. Um, yeah. But if you have any of those, it would be a great idea to maybe start looking and, you know, being a detective for yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and, and how would you detect yourself? Like the only way you can detect yourself is, I mean, you can't get the lab test done, but it'd be more like a bloating or some kind of a gas, gas that you were talking about, like the hydrogen or right? methane, those kind of things would be the self-detective part of it. Yes. And mm -hmm. they can also get the test themselves. Oh, they can, like blow, blow it themselves? Mm -hmm. Yes. And do and like be a chemist at home? <laughs> <laughs> no, but they can order the test 
and I'll, oh, I'll tell you, is- they can go to uh, directlabs.com oh, and they can okay. order a SIBA breath test themselves. Okay. Uh, now, again, you don't need a doctor um, to go to these lab service? Wow. No, okay. it's a direct lab service. Okay. Uh, and it's really, really beneficial because you're really putting health in your own hands where you can actually get that test done. You can get mm-hmm. the results. Now, what you're going to do with the results should always be with a practitioner and, and with someone who can read it properly because the tests can be very confusing. Mm-hmm. You don't know what you're looking at, but yeah. you can at least get the test and you can at least find out, oh, this says that I, mm-hmm. you know, have uh, an abundance of methane gas. Okay. Mm-hmm. I guess I need to set up an appointment with a naturopathic doctor or another type of doctor. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that this, this, I mean, you've, this, this makes complete sense that we can be our own detective, at least in the beginning, because nobody else knows better than ourselves about our bodies, right? Exactly, uh, exactly, so, yes. You know, we know what is happening in our body, whether we're feeling good or not. And if we feel some symptoms, some out of, out of whack symptoms, what you're talking about, then at least look into ourselves and see what is happening. And then if we need to, we can order the test and, and, as soon as consult with a naturopathic practitioner so that we can under, we can kind of take care of it immediately, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This has been very, very inform- informative session. Uh, I really want to thank you for giving us an overall framework as to if someone had SIBO or even the other, I think, uh, IBD or IBS, same kind of protocol would be followed, I'm assuming, but yes. symptoms might be a bit different, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And with IBS, you know, they're linking research now um, that they're saying SIBO causes almost 60% of IBS um, cases. So if you're dealing with IBS, Mm -hmm. I highly recommend uh, that you look at SIBO. And I think this is going to be a really hot topic in mainstream medicine as more and more research comes out because you know, SIBO and you, IBS correlation? Yes. Wow. Yes. yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah, so, well, for those of you who are watching and who will watch later, we t- it's all practically comes down to gut health, right? SIBO, IBS, ulcerative colitis, IBD, they're all kind of related to our gut health, and they all have different types of issues that are happening for each one of these little um, medical conditions that we have named them. Right. Yes, absolutely. And it's interesting because uh, as you're as you're saying this, I'm going, well, so is mental health, you know. Yeah. Yes. Now, now we, now the, <laughs> the brain has a little highway going over here. Yes, exactly. You know, the highway one is going from the ocean to, you know, I'm just joking, but you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So when yeah. I see clients and, you yeah. know, they have these symptoms, um, along with yes, chronic yes. anxiety and mood yes. swings, and irritability. Mm-hmm. I'm like, mm, mm-hmm. something's happening in the gut. If the gut's inflamed, the brain's inflamed. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is uh, an amazing, amazing session, Dr. Fauci. I think thank you so much for educating all of us about SIBO. I appreciate that. I don't think a lot of people know much about SIBO, you know. And, I, and the way you've explained it in a very simple way and, and how to start with the self-care and then, of course, seek out your practitioner, which is very, very important. Don't start becoming your own doctor. We are not doctors here. That's why we bring doctors. So, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, these are the educational sessions. So don't start. That's what I want to tell all of you is that don't become your own doctors. Seek out uh, practitioners around you or even online. But learn first. And that's what we are trying to um, do here, educate all of you to to understand the naturopathy medicine can help. You know, that is the message at the end of the day. There is an alternative, like Dr. Fauci um, talked about her own story. And um, so, so look out these, uh, seek out the naturopathic alternatives. Thank you. Thank you so much. And one thing that you mentioned about you know, we're not doctors, Mm -hmm. but when you come to a naturopathic doctor, Mm -hmm. we teach you how to heal yourself because you are the healer. 
That's very powerful. We, you know, we have all kind of, the whole society we have gotten used to in the last so many years of popping a pill and not really understanding our own bodies mm -hmm. and being told what to do, right? I am, you know, not, not that I'm trying to undermine anybody's capability, but, you know, as a society. So, okay, so, um, so that someone is actually asking uh, a question on, can you guys recommend some good books to read about naturopathy? Mm. <laughs> you know, I, I, I get this a lot. I don't have any at the top of mine, but I can send you um, some, you know, okay. that, uh, that I have, and then maybe you can share that with your followers. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. All right, uh, anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up this session? Uh, it, it was just a pleasure. It was a pleasure. And, and I hope everyone out there, you know, knows that you can heal yourself. I think that's a very powerful message um, that we have the ability to heal ourselves. And you're welcome. Someone is asking that. And, and you know, we never knew that we could heal ourselves. We always seek uh, professional help, which is the right way to do, but we did not know that our body is capable of healing ourselves. And that's what naturopathic medicine, naturopathy, natural medicine teaches all of us, whether it's a naturopathic medicine, acupuncture, Ayurveda, you name it, all these modalities yeah. talk about the same thing. Uh, with that, yeah. I'd like to wrap up this session. Thank you so much, Dr. Fauci, for being uh, uh, with us. Of course. And actually, if, if you don't mind, I actually want to give everyone a gift right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> while, while, while we're on here. Um, mm -hmm. So something that I teach my clients. Well, somebody's is, from Argentina, by the way. They're saying hello to you. Oh, hello oh. there. Hello there. <laughs> Love and peace to you. Um, something that I, I teach my clients mm -hmm. um, is a eating ritual. Mm. And this ritual is very simple. But the reason I teach it is because the way we do one thing is the way we do everything. And I'm sure yeah. many people have heard that, but yeah. it's so true. Mm -hmm. And so I invite each of you to use this ritual and use each time you eat as a spiritual practice. Okay. So when you sit down with your mm -hmm. food, your mm -hmm. plates in front of you, Take mm -hmm. three conscious breaths. Okay. Three All right. conscious breaths. You'll just, okay. just breathe in and out three times mm -hmm. just to get centered. And mm -hmm. what that's going to do is mm -hmm. it's going to trigger your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest nervous system. So okay. you'll be able to digest and absorb yeah. your food better. So that's wow. step one. Okay. Step two is thank your food for nourishing mm -hmm. you. Okay. Because gratitude reduces inflammation. So then gratitude you'll be able to- Gratitude reduces inflammation? Just say, say thank you? Wow. Yes. <laughs> it's the, yeah. It's the feeling yes. that's coming from us to the gut? Wow. Yes. Yes. It's actually um, the feeling, it, it's so wild, <laughs> but the feeling in the gut will then reduce inflammation so you'll be able to digest and absorb your food better um, and gratitude like all thoughts like all feelings it's energy so now you are in an energetic expression to receive the nutrients rather than just starting <laughs> it down all of us too. All you of us know too. on the go just quick 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 you know in the car whatever we you know <laughs> Go, go, go. This is a spiritual practice of patience yes, yes, yes. and presence. And then once you thank your food, you'll take a bite. And in between your bites, put your fork or spoon down and chew. Mm. Oh, with the hands? No, no, no. Uh, no. <laughs> in between your bites, <laughs> okay, you will okay, just, just for chew. Your, okay, just chew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, you'll just chew. And okay. you'll chew thoroughly. So that I way... See. There are enzymes that are produced mm -hmm. in the mouth, mm -hmm. and then there are enzymes that are produced in the stomach, mm -hmm. and these enzymes cannot be produced if you're go, 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 go. There's not enough time. 
So yeah. now food yeah. goes into the stomach. Yeah. Enzymes aren't produced. Yeah. And now you have indigestion. Now you have bloating. Now oh you don't absorb God. all the nutrients as well. No wonder the whole world has bloating now. <laughs> because we're doing like this. <laughs> right. So just right. these three things will teach you, and if you're a parent, it'll teach your children yes. how to digest not just your food, but life. Hmm. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You know, this is so beautiful what you just mm -hmm. said. You know, it makes so much sense. When if, if you watch historical movies, not that I want to go in the historical movies right now, but <laughs> if you watch the historical movies, and honestly, all of you, right? And when they show, like I was watching an 18th century English movie, and they show everybody sitting on the table and, and doing, they're not taking the breaths, but they're thanking God, right? They thank God and they say a little prayer of gratitude before they eat. And there was a reason why this used to happen 200, 300 years back, if you think yeah. about it, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And that's what naturopathic medicine, that's what yeah. these alternative and holistic medicines are all about, returning yeah. to our true nature. Yes. Well, beautiful. With that, thank, thank you. you so much, Dr. Falci, for being with us. Mm -hmm. To all the viewers, please help us share these sessions. These sessions are very, very precious to us. We bring these sessions every single day. We bring you the best experts from the world and, te and teach you or make you aware of the benefits of natural, natural medicine. That is the message we're trying to bring across to all of you. Thank you so much. Bye now. Thank you.